What a privilege and joy it is to be with you as we celebrate this amazing and wonderful anniversary that has come to one of my favorite places in the whole world. University of Montemorelos has become almost the epitome of mia casa sua casa. And when I'm with you, it's such a joy. And when I'm separated from you, even though we're communicating over electronics, it is a joy to be with you. And I bring you the greetings of the General Conference of Elder Wilson, of our team, of our Health Ministries team. I bring you the congratulations of the World Church as you reach this amazing and wonderful milestone of 45 years. And I want to say to you from the bottom of my heart, thank you for giving me the privilege of sharing in this celebration with you. So as we move forward now, my prayer is that God will be with us, that he will guide us, and I'd like you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious Father, we come to you in an atmosphere of celebration, of joy, of remembrance, gratitude for all you have done. You have promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and you have been faithful. I pray for the University of Montemorelos. I pray for the School of Medicine, for the deans, for the leaders, for the president of the university. Thank you for each teacher, each student, each worker, and Father, each graduate, as they continue to share your love around the world. Bless our time together, we pray, and thank you for your faithfulness, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We read in the book of Acts that Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, unknown. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Acts 17, 22 to 28. In him we live and move and have our being. And in Montemorelos today and around the world as graduates share in this wonderful celebration, we live and move and have our being in him. And this brings to my mind the words of St. Augustine when he looked at how magnificently made we are, this holistic being which God has created. And he wrote the following. And this is appropriate as we look at a medical school, a school of health sciences. Men go abroad to wander at the heights of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean and the circular motions of the stars and they pass by themselves without wandering. That's amazing that we can be so involved, so busy, so engaged with studying anatomy, biology and physiology and biochemistry and pathology that we forget how 
fearfully and wonderfully we are made. And the psalmist said in one, Psalm 139, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Yes, dear friends, we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. The teaching, the research and training by this school has been centered on this truth. Congratulations, Montemorelos University School of Medicine. 45 years. That's amazing. You know, the journey started in 1975 with 41 students and continues now more strongly than ever. As I perused the website, because I went to do a little homework and I also got help from my friends at Montemorelos, I saw values that derived from the Bible, such as this, internalized by the students through a strong relationship with God, expressed by love to God the following values, loyalty, trust, reverence, obedience. What amazing values to inculcate into those who will be touching the lives of those who are broken, who are sick, who are suffering, who are needy. And then love to our neighbor. Harmony, respect, two major important principles. And then comes purity, honesty, truthfulness, contentment, and service. This is what Montemorelos School of Medicine wants to inculcate into its students, what the university as a whole teaches its students and models in its staff. How is this done? How can these lofty ideals become values which we live and exercise? We get a little information on this and I'd like to share with you the secret of how these can be real, not only in the lives of our students and our teachers, but each one of us. The real secret of strength is to give ourselves and them themselves time to think, to pray, to wait on God for the renewal of physical, mental, and spiritual power. This is calling, dear friend, for us to take the time to be with God to experience the influence of his spirit. And Ellen White then encourages us, the wearied frame, the tired brain, will be quickened by fresh life, not just pausing for a moment in his presence, but personal contact with Christ, to sit down with him in companionship. This is our need. Education page 260 and 261. This is our need for us to have that relationship. We cannot do it on our own. We're living in a world gone crazy. The pandemic has changed life. It's changed economies. It's changed physical and mental and social well-being. And so we need to spend that time. We need to have the peace that comes from not pausing a few seconds, but from dwelling in the presence of God. And then I'd like to share with you as, as a medical school, the subject, the career so dear to my own heart. The words of the Apostle John, as he wrote from Patmos to his friend Gaius, and he said these words, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health, and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And so we find that John is describing holistic well-being. He's describing the body, the mind, the spirit. And actually, it takes us even into the social and relational components. So let's remember those things as we come together in Thanksgiving on the 45th anniversary of the medical school. And that's why I'm dwelling not just a little bit 
on the importance of how fearfully and wonderfully we are made, who we are, what God has created in our lives. We are fearfully, wonderfully made to His glory. And so we've come to celebrate. We're celebrating in the midst of this pandemic crisis. We've come together to remember and to celebrate. I'll never forget when I was teaching in a Sabbath school class once and I had a young man who was very bright. He became a lawyer. He's a wonderful friend still. And he pointed out, he said, I just want to mention to you that there is something very different between a party and a celebration. And I said to him, well, tell us what it is. He said, well, you know, when we come to a party, we're coming together to celebrate. Actually, when we come to a party, he said, not really celebrate. We come together to forget. When we celebrate, we come together to remember. I've never forgotten those words. Party, forget. Celebrate, remember. And so 45 years, we are celebrating today. To some, it may feel like a long, long time. Well, just look at me, you'll realize that I realize how quickly 45 years have flown by. I graduated 45 years ago. What a privilege I've had to work in the blended ministry for all the time that this excellent school has existed. And in that time, many memories have been made. Many opportunities have been shared. I've made mistakes. I've had opportunity to learn. I've had opportunity to think carefully about how things could be done differently in certain circumstances. And so we've come together to celebrate and to remember. And I want you to think of the word remember. Very easy for Seventh-day Adventists because one of the things that comes first to mind when we say remember is Exodus 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So remember, Sabbath is a celebration, but we come together to remember. Remember what? God's creation, God's, God's sovereignty, God's salvation that he grants to us. So we've been encouraged and instructed by him to remember. So as we celebrate today, let's remember his goodness. And then, I couldn't leave out Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them or these things. Interestingly, to all our students, our teachers, and even our administrators, we need to remember, help our students to remember their creator, our creator, <clears throat> in the days of their youth. Because comes the time when we don't feel as well and as energetic as we did when we were young. Let's give to our Creator the best. Let's remember Him while we're in the prime of our youth. And then the third example I'd like to share with you of remembering, and there are so many others, but that very poignant, historic, major, probably the most major issue that took place was the salvation that came to us through the death of Jesus. And Jesus said to the disciples, he spoke to them, and in Matthew said, I will not eat, I will not drink of the vine until I drink it again with you in the earth made new. And Paul records in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians he says, eat the bread in remembrance of me, drink the cup in remembrance of me, said Jesus. Remember. And when you come together, not only 
celebrate the moment, but remember why we celebrate. Today, together, we remember God's goodness, but we remember the start of a school, not any school, this school, the University of Montemorella School of Medicine. We remember not only buildings and a campus, we remember the spirit of the founders, the dedication of the teachers, the commitment of the students who have studied, who have excelled, who have graduated, the service of those graduates around the world, not just in Monterey, but in Mexico, the Inter-America Division, the Americas, and actually the world, as they extend the healing ministry of Jesus. Did I say the world? Yes, indeed I did. Just this last month, this October, we've heard with tremendous joy that permission and accreditation for a new medical school in the church has been extended to the Adventist University of Central Africa. To God be the glory. And we're so grateful. This is medical school number seven. Well, why would I share this at the celebration of Montemorelos, 45 years of medicine? Well, Montemorelos University has played a significant role supporting and making available an alumnus of yours. Dr. Eustace Pennycook, as the founding dean of the new School of Medicine in Rwanda. Thank you, Dr. Castillo, Dr. Garcia, and Dr. Aguilar, for your generous foresight, caring, and sacrifice in releasing Eustace to this task. And there is even more. You know, the connection runs strongly with Montemorelos. Your former School of Medicine and Health Sciences, the Dean of Health Sciences of the past, Dr. Zeno L. Charles Marcel, has been masterfully and skillfully playing a key role in the curriculum planning and negotiations. Our beloved friend, Zeno, has been working very hard representing General Conference Health Ministries, working on curriculum, working with hospital negotiations, medical school negotiations, and we thank God. And I keep thinking, what a blessing Montemorelos has been to the world. The blessings have been paid forward. Our second medical school has now helped to give birth to our seventh medical school. The gift and message to the world. Thank you. Thank you for sharing so selflessly. We are grateful. Thank you for tending the flame of mission that motivated the founding dean of the School of Medicine of Montemorelos, Dr. Kepler Hernandez Aguirre. We mourn together his recent passing. Thank you for training 1,659 physicians who represent the great physician and Montemorelos in 55 countries around the world. Thank you for focusing not only on curative medicine, but on health promotion, on illness prevention, on care for the sick, and on research. Thank you for achieving excellence in ethical standards and also research. Thank you for embedding, not as an afterthought, but embedding intentionally into the curriculum, and especially since 2018, a program on lifestyle medicine and behavior change. Behavior change, one of the most difficult tasks each one of us as physicians and healthcare givers face ourselves and that our patients face. Thank you for giving this emphasis. All this is the first 45 years. What comes next? As we live in these times, unprecedented in our lifetime, we will need to plan well for the future, which looks so very different from the world we knew a year ago. Plan for the future, but live as we would in end times, 
If ever you had any doubt that the last events could be rapid ones, think back on the last eight months. We should be living as we are in end times, preparing, planning, praying, and living our calling and mission to the full. This is not a time to sit back and think, well, you know, we've got many years to go ahead. We don't know the time. We don't know the hour. We need to look at this as a possible dress rehearsal for what is coming just in the next short time. I'm reminded as I think of mission, as I think of outreach, of the real life and death experience of Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, Pete Fleming, Ed McCulley, and Roger Uderian, and their families who went to serve the Waldani Alka peoples in Ecuador. Although they went equipped with all kinds of things, medicines, supplies, they also had firearms. But when questioned before they went and when they got there, they said, we will not defend ourselves. They didn't defend themselves. When they were massacred by those they went to serve and introduced to the great physician, they did not defend themselves. These five men had stated, and they went with their families, at the beginning of their mission, they would not kill the Waodani. When questioned why, they said, they are not yet ready for heaven. We are. What a commitment. What a dedication. To go willing, knowing that this could cost your life. They went there and witnessed the killing ways of the Waodani. And killing came cheaply in that culture. Those five men were killed in 1955 when they went to serve. Two spouses went back to serve the Waodani people. Rachel Saint and Elizabeth Elliot. They returned to work. And the Waodani themselves years later said, if those two women had not come back, we, the Waodani, would not exist because of our killing ways. The message of salvation brought homicides down by 90% percent in that population. These are amazing figures. Here we have five missionaries killed, massacred. What were they doing? They were serving. They were sharing the love and faith of Jesus. They were leading people to salvation. And yet, two wives, two spouses, were willing to go back. So what changed in these people that brought down homicides by 90%? What made the difference? It was not a sudden biological transformation. What changed was the available information brought to them at huge cost. That cost, no greater love has won than they lay down their life for their friends. And so the question comes to us today, what of the future? I do not know what tomorrow holds. I do not know what God has promised, other than that he's promised to be with us and to sustain us. And I thank God for that. That promise that he has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, <clears throat> gets me out of bed in the morning. Because even in this COVID crisis, when none of us know whether or not we would survive if we contracted COVID, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that God has said, I will be with you. Montemorello School of Medicine, I will be with you. Each teacher, each administrator, each student, each worker, he has said, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. And then as we look years later, Nate Saint, one of those who was killed in massacres, his daughter was baptized in the same place in the river where her father was killed on that fateful day in the 1950s. Her father never saw the fruits of his labors. He didn't even witness that his beautiful daughter made the decision to be baptized right where he gave up his life for his friends. We'll not always see the fruits and outcomes of our work, but one day, one day, by his grace, we will know. One day we'll hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And you know, there are going to be people who are there who will come to the graduates of the University of Montemarillo Law School of Medicine and say, you prayed with me. You touched my life. You modeled the compassion of Jesus. You led me. You were kind to me. You brought the sunshine of righteousness into my life. And so I want to encourage you, whatever the challenges are that we face, whatever the obstacles, be it resources, finances, r registration, whatever it may be, remember, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I want to share with you that encouragement from Isaiah, which says, do you not know? Have you not heard? When you're looking around at what is going on, when you see the newscasts, the newspapers, the, the tweets, the Instagrams, remember, the Lord will not grow tired or weary. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be found, not be faint. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. I want to tell you a little story about running and not fainting and walking and not growing weary. You know, <clears throat> people sometimes look at me and say, did, did, you, did you ever run a lot? <laughs> yes, I did. And I still exercise and I love it. But there were years where I, and for 11, 12 years in a row, I ran the Cherry Mountain Half Marathon. It's a mountain run up a very steep mountain, down the other side. And I would run this every year. <clears throat> One of the most beautiful experiences I had was to take my daughter at the time when she started to do long distance running as well. And she ran her first half marathon with me. And you know, we've got a lot of young people from the church to come around. And I was uh, working in the mission, in the practice in that town. And uh, they came along and they, they kind of looked at me. And uh, you must remember then I was 35 years younger than I am now. And uh, they kind of said, well, uh, Dr. Pete, we'll, we'll see you at the end. And I said, we'll see you at the other side. But what was tremendous fun for me was that this prayer, you will run and not faint, you will walk and not grow weary, translated even into running the physical marathon. Because as I would run, I would measure my pace, and particularly when I was taking my daughter on her first long run, we ran strategically. And interestingly, those young people, many of whom I had the privilege to baptize, started to be lagging in the run. They slowed down. They got tired. Why? Because they didn't realize that you have to take this race strategically. You have to realize that what's coming ahead could be very difficult. And so they got weary and here came their pastor doctor carefully, methodically, strategically gave them a hug and left them behind to meet the finishing post before they did. Not because of great speed or talent, 
but because God's grace gives strength that we will walk and not grow weary, we will run and not be faint. And I want to share that with you today. I want to leave that thought with you. These words are not a wish, but they are the promise of God who's brought us all thus far. He will give you strength even when you feel you cannot take your next breath, face your next challenge, graduate your next class. And He is faithful. He will sustain until He comes. And my prayer and my plea is go forward in His strength. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget how God has led us in the past and His teachings. That's an amazing thing. So I've encouraged you today. Remember, celebrate. We've come not to a party, we've come to a celebration. And so, University of Montmorelos School of Medicine, God will not let go of you. He has promised. Our gracious Father, thank you for having shed your blessings on the University of Montemorelos School of Medicine for these past 45 years plus. For the years that it took to start it. For the years that are going to come until you return. We commit the school. We commit its leadership. We commit each component, each member, each student to you. And thank you that you are faithful. Father, we look forward to eternity and spending eternity with you and those whom we love and for whom we've labored. And I pray, Father, that there will be a special reward for each one who has ministered through the auspices of the School of Medicine of Montemorelos. Thank you for hearing our prayer, for loving us, and for promising never to leave us, nor to forsake us. We praise you and love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.